And we're live. Hello, hello. Um, Thistle and Verse, so Thistle and Verse. Um, and this is Sophia, Fantasy Book Addict. And today we're doing slow reads for The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemison. So today we're trying to get through chapters four through eight. Uh, that's the plan. Um, in terms of intro, I guess I should introduce myself. So I mostly read science fiction and fantasy by black authors, and this is my channel. So presumably you know that because we're far read along and not a lot of people are joining. And then this is Sophia from Fantasy Book Addict, and she mostly reads adult fantasy, and she's very cool, and you should check out her channel. It should be linked in the description box of the video. So I'm gonna wait like about five minutes to see if people show up. So eh, I take that back. I'm gonna wait till 2:05 my time for people to show up. So that's like three minutes, and then we can start the sprints, like 25 minute sprints. Um, yeah. How far are you in the the book, Sophia? I'm pretty sure I read ahead past okay. chapter eight. Yeah, I feel like Cause... each book it gets quicker and quicker. I was I was intrigued. I was like I I can't just stop at <laughs> five. I like I need to know what's going on. Yeah. Well, yeah. I still don't like um, what's her face? Not Nassim. Uh, Nassim. I feel like I'm, I'm mispronouncing her name. It's probably Nassim, like you were saying. Wait, Nassin. what? You pronounce it Nassim? I'm like Nassim. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, I'm just like, eh, she I like, oh my gosh, I don't know if this is a spoiler, but like, I don't know if I can say it. You could put it in the private messenger and I'll let you know if it's a spoiler. Okay. This is so bad. I just realized I didn't put the link in the discord. I don't understand. If you hear a noise in the background, I'm sorry. That's my that's my dad and my uncle. That's fine. Pretty good deal. Okay. It's been sent. Okay, I'll take a look. <laughs> this is so pathetic. Cause I, I I'm pretty sure I put it up on Twitter. Um yeah. but it just wasn't in the Discord. I'm gonna double check it's on Twitter really quick. Hey, Salter. I think it is because I retweeted it. I don't. I don't know. I I guess I would hold on that because I don't know if it is a spoiler or not. Okay. I I mean I guess it kind of is. I guess. But yeah, I just found that scene interesting, quite, quite <laughs> interesting. I actually don't think I remember what you're talking about. So what I'm thinking of happened back, and I think in Obelisk Gate. No, it's this. It's yeah, in this so I don't one. know what you're talking about. So it'll be a, it'll be an adventure for me as well. Okay, so we're at two oh five. Let's. Share this screen so we can start the sprints. Okay, so we'll start with ah, 25 and we'll see you when the sprints are over. Happy reading.
Okay, that was a 25 minute mark. How is people's reading going? I right was like now, a little, sorry. Um, I am on, I don't even know. Chapter eight, so anagist. Oh, okay. I think we're in a similar, a similar spot. I like just finished chapter eight and I'm in like the, one of the Hoa chapters. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This trying to charge my computer and this setup is just not cooperating with me. Yeah, okay. I had to change minds before just so I could stay in bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh it was interesting. Have you gotten up to the, the city ruins part yet? With Nasum? Yeah. Yeah. So I it's think that she found the the briar patch that um Hawa and the tuners mentioned like earlier in the book, like in the prologue, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Still um, doesn't seem to like Shafa very much. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I want. Oh, I think I was, it was just like interesting to me that um, to have like how Essen had her, or yes, Sinite had her moment with Alabaster where he told her like, you know, this was like how origins are treated as like a project. Like there was like political forces behind it and like there's a reason for everything. Yeah. It was kind of interesting because Nassen is like so advanced. Like in my head, she's just like advanced beyond the fulcrum and stuff like that because of her magic, but like she's still. Like that was news to her. Like that wasn't something she had to like think about or contend with like in her life. So, mm. yeah. but sorry, you were saying. I just hate the Nasun and Shafa dynamic so much with like with a burning passion. I like at one point she's just like, you're my father now. And I'm just like, ah, but this man is trash. <laughs> He's her papa. This man is garbage. He's the reason why generational trauma exists in your family. What do you mean? <laughs> ah, I feel I uh I feel so conflicted because yeah. like he is, he is responsible in a indirect way for all the trauma that um Nasun has gone through with her mom. But also, he's a better father than Jija. So I'm just like, I don't know how to feel about this right now. I am confused. But like, ugh. Perplexed. Yes. They had a little Ohana means family moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, maybe some family should be left behind or forgotten. <laughs> But that's just me. That's just me. <laughs> not so this family is overrated. You know? uh, Salter said, I just finished chapter eight this morning, and now I'm back just before chapter five. So Lana just, I guess Salter's doing like a hybrid read. So I think he did the audio first, and now I think he's doing the, the physical. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think of like the ruins of this? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't earn his redemption. He just bumped his head. I mean, that's where I'm at with him. I'm like, it's cool that you can be yeah. nice to people for a little bit, but like, <laughs> I still don't like you. I knew you before you bumped your head, so I still don't like you. Mm. Um, what did you think of like the ruins and all that? I thought the ruins were really fascinating. And like, I feel like it has something to do with Hoa's chapters that are going on right now. So like, I'm thinking that the ruins that Nasun is discovering are like what Hoa's home was before. If that yeah. makes sense, you know? Yeah, I think, I think there are hints that this is, this might yeah. be Hoa's doing. Yeah, um, that's just, 
That's my theory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think of the? Oh, what do you think of like the tuners and all that, and like the little, like the before times that we're getting glimpses of. Honestly, I think it was interesting because like we got into this part, like, cause like we figured out where origins come from and like they technically come from the stone eaters. But like the chapter I just read talked about the war and how like the people had the ice white eyes. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And like how they were basically persecuted. And so the stone eaters were created in a lab in order for people to be comfortable in their bigotry. And I, I just find that incredibly fascinating, yet disgusting at the same time. And like the way that the technology works, where it's like just magic and vines. And so like how the houses can regenerate and stuff, I think that is so dope. It's like it's like sci-fi, sci-fi fantasy mixed. And I yeah. think NK Jameson did a really good job with that. Yeah, I didn't put this together until you said magic and vines, but it kind of reminds me. Have you read uh, Zara the Windseeker by Nettie Akorafor? No, I have not. It's a middle grade. Um, I th I think it depends on where you get it. Like, I think she's Akorafor says it's an adult, but like my library shelved it as a middle grade. Um, but like they have like living buildings and stuff that are made out of plants and like they kind of like will grow their buildings like they're like oh i want a building here so i'm gonna plant this like building seed <laughs> and i'm gonna get this building or like i think all their computers are plant-based too so it just reminded me of the similarities between these two worlds um also have you watched the anime uh neon genesis evangelion no Okay, I would. I don't know if I necessarily recommend it. Like, I enjoy it, but like, I don't know if I'm necessarily gonna like, you know, push it to everyone. Um, but for some reason, this book in particular really makes me think of that anime. I think it's because they talk about people being like grown and like capsids, and in NGE, they have like pods that they have to get into to like pilot these like big robots. I think that might be part of it. I think also, as we learn about how the technology works, I think that's um, also why it makes me think of that. Oh, I think in Jerry's read, uh, Zara the... I'm, I'm about to mess up the name so bad. This is embarrassing, I just said it. Zara the Windseeker. I think in Jerry's read, I just said it's so good. Um, Salta says, oh, the niece remind me of indigenous Americans and Mexicans. Um, would be the enemy made in the image of wiped out native people. Mm -hmm. um, I think the niece, I don't think we've talked a lot about the niece in the book thus far that I can remember. There's kind of like allusions made to like these people, the niece and like, I know what you're talking about Salter, but in terms of where we are, I don't know if we've gotten into them a whole lot yet, um, but yeah. And it has been set up. <laughs> the setup has been building because I don't know. I think it's been building because I remember the, the how like Essen <laughs> navigates the world in the fifth season. She's always like trying to figure out people's like racial identity and like racial makeup. And like I think it's been building to this point. And in the obelisk gate in the first chapter, it mentioned the lorists were based on I think it was like the Regwo, like a people who like dressed a certain way and like histories were important to them. And like, mm -hmm. so there's like facets of the lore of the Regwo that are like built into the Loris tradition. But like people don't really talk about the Regwo cause what is history? Dead civs aren't important. And like now, now it's coming full circle. <clears throat> <laughs> so I'll just, I stopped all right when Kehlani said they'll go see the next. It's Kalenly. <laughs> That's very close. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm like in the middle of that chapter where like Cleanly's like, the reason why, oh, that was funny. When um, they were like, they just met Cleanly and they're like, how good she can she possibly be? Like, oh, I can control like these obelisks. What obelisks can you control? She's like, I can control the onyx. And they're like, oh, gasp. 
Um, <laughs> no one can control the onyx. And she's <laughs> like, the reason why I can control the onyx is because I can, I go outside. So we're all going to go on a field trip so that you'll become better tuners. Um, that was interesting. I love that. They deserved that field trip. And they did. I really yeah. like their chapters. Um, I don't I think I just like whenever they talk about the dead sims because before I think like when we're reading chapters one to four, it was really like Hoa's chapters and Essence chapters that were holding my attention. But now that Nassin is in like the dead sim and she's like fiddling around with all that stuff. Um, now her chapters are my favorite and like, I don't really, I'm not too worried about what's happening in Castrema right now, even though I know it's important. Hey, hey. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I want to know what happened with Hoa in the dead zoo. I'm like, they're trying to survive? Who cares? Who cares? Take us back. Take us back. Yeah. Steel's not even involved with them anymore. So who even knows if the stone eaters are going to give us any hints? Um, any last things you want to talk about before we start another spell? No. Uh, no. Okay. I'm still laughing at Salter calling Kalenli Kalani. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how long do we want to go for the next one? Like 35? Like longer than that? I think 30 minutes is good. 30. Mm hmm Okay. Okay. Starting the 30 minute timer. Wait, what? Okay, well, it's a dog for some reason. <laughs> See you in 30. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> ah, I think that was 30 minutes. <laughs> I didn't realize that there was going to be a weird barking noise at the end of the timer. So I was like looking around outside like, oh, wow, that's all really close to getting into our car. <laughs> um, so yeah, how's reading going? Where are you now? It's going good. Right now I'm on chapter 10, Nasun and Shafar and the weird train situation. Yeah. Mm, I just really want to get back to Hoa's chapters, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm in the same spot as you because we're like pretty much in the same place. Um, I was just looking for some article on, was it? They said they're in the what, asthenosphere. So I was just looking for like an article or a diagram of the Earth layers to throw in the Discord. Hmm. Oh, who care? <laughs> it's so interesting because like I I didn't like Hoa when I first met him. Like in the first like in the first book, I was just like, I don't trust him. He seems kind of sketch. But mm. like now, I'm just like I just need his perspectives, please. Like that's that's all I want. Yeah. Mm. Like, hmm. I'm trying to remember. I definitely did not trust him in the beginning of the book. I think mm. I trust him now. He's saying he's doing all this stuff, and it seems like he cares enough about Essen's opinion to be reliable. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm just like. I need to know about your life and what's going on and how you got here. Mm. Uh, yeah. I'm like past chapter eight at this point, so I don't want to talk in too much detail about stuff. Um, is there anything else? I mean, I don't know if there was. Um, what Essence going. So Castrema was trashed at the end of the last book, and that was us and up to. They're going to what Reninus, the place yeah. that attacked them, and their plan is to like basically just try and conquer them and take their food. I think, I think everybody is dead in Reninus, which is why they chose to go. Oh, wait, yeah. why is everyone dead? Did she? Did I think ice it when she had the the obelisk? Either that or they all, I think so. I think that's what happened. Cause like, I know it's empty, which is why they're choosing to go. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Salter says this book so far isn't hitting for me like the first two. It is a little slower than I remembered. Mm -hmm. um, there is still a lot of buildup happening. Um, mm -hmm. and, or like maybe like, halfway through the book. Um, yeah, so I'll just say the second felt like it gains momentum from the first, but this one seems to be slowing down. I think it's also because like Hoa's stuff just like did not exist until this book. And so it's kind of like an interlude, but yeah, I can see what you mean. I don't know, I, mean, I stand strong in my opinion that the Obelisk Gate is the best of the series. You think the Obelisk Gate is the best in the series? That's my favorite, yeah. <gasps> really? I think it's a very uh, really? popular opinion. Yeah, I think I'm like I don't think I've met any people who said that. <laughs> I think I think for me so far the first book is the superior. Obviously, yeah. I have this is my first time reading the fifth, the Stone Sky. So, like my opinion. Uh, okay. Yeah, Probably. I think because, I know it's the first time for this one. Yeah, I think it's because like I really didn't like. Not so much perspective. I did. I just didn't like that whole dynamic, and we focused so much. Yeah. On the dynamic, and plus, like, I feel like the the first book, the way it was executed, was so interesting because you didn't understand why it was in second or first person, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, like that plot twist at the end, it was just, it was and the themes, it was just perfection perfection in my mind ah. mm -hmm. honestly it, it I, it's my favorite that's your favorite so far yeah, yeah. Okay. Salter says I'm hoping it all comes together in a solid payoff not worried about it falling flat but I'm curious how this is going to land 
Yeah. For me, I think the payoff was solid. Um, yeah, I don't remember like what the general opinion was on like online of what people thought of it. I feel like the, you know how every chapter has that little like note at the end, like mm -hmm. some like historical text or whatever. Yeah. I think the tone has definitely changed. Like in the beginning, it was like very much talking about like origins, saving people and being found out and then like what happened to them. It was mm -hmm. like, which was like weird because before the little end notes didn't really have like a common theme. Like it was just kind of like about whatever was happening in the chapter. And now the tone is like changing a little to talking about how people in the stillness don't keep track of history and why that's bad. Um, I think that was a, that's like one of them. And so I'm wondering like where we're gonna go from here. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't really remember much about it. I, I have faith in the ending. I have faith it's gonna crush me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it probably will, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just I just like it when books make me cry. I don't I don't know why. <laughs> That's funny. Um I think I can do like one more sprint. Um do you want to do another 30 minute? Another 30 minutes is good. Okay, I'm gonna pick a different timer because that barking kinda <laughs> turn me off. I wasn't even on purpose. I, I was clicking like the usual timer and then out of nowhere, it's like, do you want to use this dog barking alarm? I was like, I mean, not really, but if it's here. I want to, I really hope that they're, I want to know if as soon is going to meet up with Shafa. Like, I feel like that confrontation is coming. Mm. But like, I don't know if I'm ready for it. Like, I want it, but am I ready for it? I don't know. Mm. Well, I mean, she she knows now that Shafa's with Nassim, right? Yeah. Like someone told her. Yeah. I think she she went. Or she to, knew when she had the obelisk, right? She figured out who yeah. was at her. And she so was just like, like, "Damn, that part. That's the part that got to me, where she was just like, I made her into me." I turned her into a monster. Like, she's a <laughs> And I'm just like, damn. All her life choices flashed before her eyes. Um, um, oh, and I just had a random question. So we know that the TV series, the rights have been bought and Jemison's on working on it. Do you think there's going to be a re-release of the books? Like, I don't think we're going to get, my prediction is that there's going to be a re-release, but I don't think it's going to be, like, a nice, like, I want, like, a hardcover release. I don't think that's going to happen. I think if there's a re-release, I think there's going to be paperbacks with, like, the actor's pictures on the cover and, like, yeah. an ugly book club sticker on it. Is That's what I'm guessing. <laughs> but I'm wondering if you have a different opinion. <laughs> yeah. It, it's definitely going to be that. It's going to be, like, uh, wait, what's, who, what was the TV? Who bought it? The what channel? You know how like if it's like adapted by Netflix and it's gonna be like a Netflix original oh, series. Oh, yeah, they have the big N on the front. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to remember. Was it? It wasn't. I think at one point, CW had it. I thought. Um, no. No. Like, I thought that was before Jemison announced that she was writing the series. Like I think since then it's changed hands. Let me. Thank God, CW. They did the Vampire Diaries and Riverdale and all of them. Like I, I can't, I, I, I can't imagine CW doing this show, and then actually doing a good job. Yeah, I might have just pulled that company out of my my butt, but I feel like that was what it was. Oh, uh, it says, oh, sorry, it's a Broken Earth movie, and it's Sony TriStar. It's gonna be a movie. I I feel like I feel like this series would be better adapted as like a television series rather than a movie. Because yeah. like with a movie, you only get like up to two hours to develop, and like there's just so much in these books that they I can mean, make like a the full thing where every book gets split into like two parts. Because I feel like then we get six probably... movies. I feel like that's what they, would happen if it's a movie deal. They they will. Because, like, that's how they get their money. 
<laughs> Salter says the Netflix good, but I'm not watching it because they refuse to finish stuff. Yeah. And like the thing about Netflix is that they're so hit or miss. It's either it's, the stuff they create is either really good or absolutely horrible. Like, you didn't like the there's no board? in between. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did, uh, did Netflix also do After with that British guy, the Harry Styles fanfic? Didn't they I haven't that? seen that. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I don't really watch yeah. a lot of Netflix's original content. Um, like, I think they've done like some translations of movies, if I remember correctly, which I uh, liked. But like, they didn't produce the yeah. movie; they just did the translation. I think. They did an Americanized version of Death Note. Oh, wait, that was them. I forgot that was them. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. I'm just like trying to imagine like the costuming and the wigs if Netflix got a hold of this. And, oh and my gosh. They would ruin it. I, honestly, I wouldn't bother watching it. <laughs> <laughs> what well, I hate watch it though. If it, cause if it was on Netflix, it would be easy to get a hold of. True. I'm trying to think. I feel like I'd hate watch at least one episode. Maybe two. Hi. I, you can do a video on it. I guess that's where all the views would be, right? Is talking about how these book adaptations hold up. True. Well, yeah, I don't trust them at all. Mm. Okay. So... Last sprint of the day. Oh, <laughs> Salter says it's going to be an unironic, the most unironic rip of a Tyler Perry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, mess. Okay. So, last sprint of the day, last 30 minutes. I'll see you soon.
Okay, that was 30 minutes. Um, how's people's reading going? I'm on page 274, so I'm like almost done chapter 11. So I'm not going to talk too much about what I read. I just finished chapter 10 and I'm on Hollis chapter of Sil Anagist. Sil okay. Anagist 1. Oh, I, I didn't realize that it, that it counts down for the Sil Anagist chapters. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, I have I have one Sil Anagist chapter left. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm trying to remember, I think they're, I know there are more. I'm gonna check if they do the countdown thing though. But how are you liking it so far? Uh, so far, I do like it. I'm confused though. <laughs> like I'm confused as to, oh, and then, okay. I'm confused as to like how all of these things are connected, which I guess is going to be answered in like the climax. Mm -hmm. But like that chapter when Nasun and Hoa go down into the earth and they actually see Father Earth, I oh, was Nasun like, and Shafa. Oh, yeah. That was, was like, wild. Oh, That'll hey. be interesting to see if they get a good special effects budget for the. That's Ooh, crazy. Yeah. To me. And like he absorbs human life for revenge. I'm just like, oh my gosh. That's crazy. And like imagine being tormented by like the center of the earth for all eternity. Because like, oh, oh no. That's crazy to me. Yeah. That was pretty wild. Mm -hmm. Oh, Salter says, I'm excited to see what's to come in the chapter you both are into right now. Yeah. It's um, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Very wild. Mm -hmm. So I don't have much to say. Um, I think the next sprints are going to be for chapters, what is it? 9 to 12. That will be next Saturday at 7 p.m. Um, so if people are looking for time to sprint, you can join us then. And thanks for coming, everybody. Bye. Oh.